Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Danny Christine. I am a childcare business owner, consultant, and a digital content creator on childcaresites.com where you can find resources for childcare professionals such as yourself, whether you are a home daycare provider, a childcare business owner, or a multi-center operator like me, there are so many things that you can take advantage of on that website, childcaresites.com, such as free webinars, podcast episodes, worksheets or even courses that you can purchase to help you improve the quality of your childcare business or get one started. If you are not following me on Instagram, I'm not sure why, but also you would not know that every weekend I host an open Q&A on my Instagram, which is Danny Christine Consulting. Follow me on Danny Christine Consulting so that every week you can get your questions in, whatever they may be, about the child care business um, or about what I do in general. In the Q&A that I hosted last week on Instagram, somebody brought up the topic of accreditation. And I thought, this is something that a lot of providers may not know about for one or struggle with determining whether it is that they should go for accreditation or just don't think is worth it. So I figured I'd start a conversation here on my YouTube channel with you to help you figure out if accreditation is for you and hear your thoughts on it, to be honest, in the comment section below. I definitely want you guys to leave your thoughts on the accreditation process and whether or not it has been helpful for you in your childcare business or the reasons why you want to pursue it if you're starting one up. So let's talk about it. Accreditation is an official review process performed by a nationally recognized outside agency. And by that, I mean an agency, an organization, something outside of your own business performs a review of your childcare business and determines whether or not it meets the standards for accreditation. This is very different than licensing and sometimes people get it confused. Just because your program is licensed doesn't mean that it is accredited and vice versa. And actually, I believe that you cannot become accredited with most agencies unless you are licensed. And if I'm wrong about that, definitely correct me in the comments below. But one does not mandate the other. The most popular accreditation agency is the National Association for the Education of Young Children, or what is known as NACI or NICE or N-A-E-Y-C. Depending on your location, you might pronounce that acronym different or use it differently or say the whole thing. So that is the National Association for the Education of Young Children, and they have different chapters and divisions within each state. So my childcare businesses are located in the state of New York. So whenever there there are NICE functions, it is usually under the New York Association for the Education of Young Children or NYAEYC. If you're in Georgia, it would be GAEYC, I think. <laughs> um, so it's usually the state um, acronym attached to AEYC. Another popular accreditation agency is the NAFCC, which is the National Association for Family Child Care. So if you have a child care business in your home or apartment, then you might want to go for accreditation through the NAFCC. There's also the National After School Association for school age child care programs and so on and so forth. There's a couple, but I believe those are the most popular. There's also different quality rating systems that are not necessarily national accreditation agencies, but they definitely require you to meet certain standards in order to participate and publicize the quality rating of your program. And I've spoken about this before, but those types of organizations are called quality rating and improvement systems or what are known as QRIS is. And in the state of New York, our QRIS is Quality Stars of New York or QSNY. I feel like I'm just throwing a whole bunch of alphabet, <laughs> alphabet soup letters at you guys, but I hope you're catching on and understanding. But quality rating and improvement systems are not 
national accreditations. They are usually local and help to publicize the quality of your program, usually with a star rating or a number rating or something like that. National accreditation, on the other hand, puts a stamp of approval on your program and also ensures that you exceed the expectations of those licensing minimum standards and that you perform better in order to offer quality program like health and safety of the children, but also education. Now, the pros of being nationally accredited with NAEYC, NAFCC, or the National After School Program, or something like that, an accreditation agency, is that usually, along with just having a better business and implementing better practices and having a resource like that accreditation agency, you will have that stamp of approval that some families might look for. They might only want to go with an accredited program because they learned about it or they have friends or family that have children in accredited programs and they think that that is the only way to go. So you have that stamp of approval there. But also those agencies provide a lot of resources. They provide trainings, they provide conferences and all of those things that you can take advantage of. And I'm not saying that if you choose to not get accredited, you can't get quality trainings and go to quality conferences because you should know that that is not true. There are so many opportunities hundreds of conferences held nationally each year that you can attend whether or not you are a member of these accreditation programs, agencies, QRISs, whatever it is. If you're just an independent program that chose not to go that way, you can still learn a lot and take advantage of the resources around you, but there are certain benefits that you cannot get. And I would definitely encourage you to check out the description box of this video in order to find links to these different accreditation programs websites where you can learn about what the benefits are of becoming accredited as a business, as a company, as an individual person looking for professional development. There are different opportunities with being accredited with different agencies. The downside of going through accreditation is that it is a process. It's a lengthy process that requires a lot of time dedicated. It requires a lot of paperwork completed properly. It requires a lot of documentation of the different things that go on inside of your program. And if you have not done a great job of keeping records of events, of required registration forms, of policies, of procedures, just the different things that make your child care business your child care business and what is unique about it. If you're not documenting those things over the years, it could be hard for you to go through the accreditation process without having those systems in place and things to pull from. And I talk a lot about digital tools and systems and just different things to help with the administrative processes within your business. And I'll leave some links to previous videos in the description as well so that you can check those out and hopefully put yourself in a better position if you do choose to go through the accreditation process. But it is certainly a lengthy one. And that's kind of what intimidates a lot of providers. They don't want to fail. They don't want to go through those processes or they just believe that they don't have the time. Usually with most of these accreditation agencies, you don't have to do everything all at once or within a week. I believe they give you a time frame of a couple of months or upward of a year or something like that where you can slowly build your portfolio, uh, so to speak, where you can add in the information that they are requesting over a period of time so it is not too overwhelming. But usually what happens with providers that know what accreditation is and chooses not to do it is they see the rubric or they see the requirements, they see the requested documents and they say, that's too much or I don't have time or it's not worth it. Now that's a question to consider. 
is it worth it? Will you see a difference in your program or your enrollment or parent engagement or anything like that if you do go through this accreditation process? And I think that that is a question that needs to be reflected on individually within your own programs and consider what your market is. You might be in a program where you're getting phone calls asking, is your program accredited? Or you might notice that the rest of the centers in your area or home daycares in your area have these accreditations and you don't. That might be something that pushes you to say like, okay, I have to do this because everybody is asking. For example, not related to accreditation, but when I had my home daycare and I first opened, a lot of families were calling me asking, are your teachers licensed? No, <laughs> my teachers are not licensed. My teachers don't need to be licensed in order to be an assistant in a home daycare. And if you are not familiar, a teacher's license, and at that time I was just coming out of college, so I knew what a teaching license was. It was completing your degree, <laughs> completing your bachelor's degree, completing several tests and exams and going through uh, what is called an ed TPA portfolio and submitting that to the state in order to get your license. Our home daycare assistants do not need to do that by the minimum standards of our licensing agency. So no, our teachers are not licensed. But after a few of those phone calls, what I learned and recognized was that a lot of parents just don't know the terminology. They saw that it was a home daycare. They probably saw that it was being run by a young black woman and assumed that maybe this is not like a state regulated or controlled environment or whatever. They maybe thought that it might be illegal and just wanted to check. So once I figured like, hmm, maybe the parents just don't know what to ask and they just want to know that their child is going to be safe and there are rules that we have to follow. So after a couple months of getting that question, instead of saying, no, our teachers don't are not licensed, they don't need a license or trying to convince them in that direction, I educated the families and said, our program is licensed. Our program is licensed by New York State. Our teachers go through 30 hours of training every year. They are CPR certified and first aid certified and so on and so forth. So I heard their question and I gave them an answer that they were looking for, that our program was licensed and regulated and that our teachers are educated and meet the qualifications for New York State. Now, I'll share with you that my programs, my centers that I have right now are not accredited by NAEYC. We have not gone through that accreditation process for the same reasons that I told you about in the beginning of this video. It's a lot of paperwork that I just don't really feel is necessary at this time as we're building the business and working on expansion. My program is full, we're providing quality, and I just have not felt the need to go through the documentation to prove that we are providing quality to get that stamp of approval because nobody's asking. Parents are not calling asking if we're accredited. We are not having a difficult time with gaining new enrollments and I'm not seeing the other centers in my area go through that accreditation process either. So it is not a highly competitive thing for me to try to get into. I have looked into it, I am interested, and I think that I would consider myself to be an overachiever, so I want to do it just so that I can have that A plus rating. Um, but re in reality, it's not a need. It's not a need to spend that money because I do believe there are application fees with most of these agencies and spend that time focusing on gathering the documentation to go through accreditation when I could be spending that time to invest that time in my business and making it a better program. And that's just how I feel about it. Again, 
I do think that there are great resources, benefits, and advantages that come along with accreditation. And I'm not going to lie, I will probably go through the process in the future when I do have some downtime and I'm able to focus on that or when we have extra staff on hand where I can delegate the task of going through the accreditation process and documentation and all of that to a specific staff member. But I don't have anybody that I'm willing to burden with that task right now because my admin team is busy with other things and I am busy with a lot of things and I just don't see the need. And that's okay. I don't believe that you should be down on yourself or think negatively about your program if you don't have accreditation. I believe that you should take the time that you would spend on that process and invest it back into your business to improve the quality of your business and get better about documenting the pr processes and procedures that you do have going on so that when it does come time for you to go through the accreditation process in the future, if you want to, you will have pretty much all the information you need in order to apply for accreditation because it will be organized efficiently. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think? Leave it in the comments below. Is your program accredited? Are you going through the accreditation process right now? If you've chosen not to go through accreditation, why is it that you decided that way? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out childcaresites.com for all the resources that you need to start up a quality childcare business. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.